Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. So hello again modelers, we're back here in the workshop. Today we're going to have a look at another part of the cockpit of the DB Oster. <laughs> I'm trapped in here it seems forever. Um, I'm going to look at the framework that goes above the pilot. It goes across the top of the uh, cockpit. It's a, sort of a cruciform cross of tubing. And in the centre of the cross is a, a gear and a, an armature and some cables and a little winder, a little crank. And the idea is that uh, if the pilot wants to trim the nose down or trim the nose up, then this little winder is... Um, is operated just above his head. So what we're going to do today is try and recreate the framework, the tubing, the winder and maybe even the little gear uh, or the little part gear that is involved. Um, unfortunately we can't fit this completely so the four corners will remain unglued um, and the reason is I've, I've painted a pilot figure and I've used oil paints as advised by Aces of Iron website. Um, and unfortunately, if you ever go into that uh, trap, you'll find that oil paint takes a very long time to dry. <laughs> and I've been waiting weeks for it to dry. Uh, the first coat took three or four weeks, uh, which was just the base coat. And then the highs and lows, the low lights and what have you, which I'll show you in another video later on, maybe if you're interested, um, <laughs> have been another three weeks and they're still not dry. Until the pilot goes in, I can't put this framework in because I can't get the pilot past the, um, the framework. So we'll build the framework, we'll push it into place at the end of the video so you can see what it looks like, uh, but it won't get fitted permanently until much later on. Okay, let's get cracking. I wanted to start by setting a reference point in space. This is where the, the cross of the tubing meets. Um, and it's not in the middle, it's not central as far as fore and aft, it's more over the pilot's head than in front. So what I did was just take a piece of quarter, quarter square balsa uh, and positioned it exactly where I wanted it and then found the midpoint. And that gave me a reference point for where the tubing would meet.
There are a couple of different ways to cut tubing. This is the correct way with one of these KNS tube cutters. And what it has is a very sharp wheel that is pushed against the tubing and as you rotate the tubing it scores it. Uh, eventually will break through but quite often I just let it score it and then snap it as you will see. Later in the video, on the next piece of pipe, you'll see that there's another way of doing it and it's far quicker. It ruins your scalpel blade but I usually keep one scalpel on hand that has a slightly blunt blade uh, just for the purpose of cutting tubing. This will show you how much easier and quicker it is just to use a scalpel to cut the tubing.
I did a rough sketch of the shape of the bracket that sits on the uh, tubing which holds the section of gear and the winder. Two identical pieces of plastic card were cut to form the two brackets that sit either side of the gear. Alas, the entire next section covers making a semicircular gear uh, and cutting little triangular teeth in it using uh, a triangular needle file. However, all that footage seems to have been lost. So um, that circle you see me drawing, I then divided into two and uh, used one half to create gears. You'll see it later. Sorry about that. So moving right along, the next bit I wanted to look at was making the windy handle. Now you think to yourself, how the heck am I going to do that? But I watched a video ooh, several years ago where Dave Platt drew the profile of something, an object that he wanted to model uh, in plastic card. And then he coated each side of the plastic card in blobs of P38, which is a car bodybuilding uh, polyester based filler. He then carved it and uh, shaped it into what he needed. So we're going to try that. First, I made a quick drawing of roughly the uh, shape I wanted to do. Always, if this was a real scale model, you would have taken dimensions from the full size and done this a little bit more accurately. But uh, we're just having a bit of fun here, so it's an approximation. First of all, I cut a paper template, then I transferred the outline to plastic card and cut that out. P38 or Bondo or I don't know what else you'd call it in other countries but it's a, a polyester-based polyester uh, filler used in car bodies 
and it sets very quickly. It's a two-part jobby, so most of it is uh, the filler, and then there's a little tiny blob of activist. Uh, the more activist you put in, the quicker it sets, but I find even if you put a tiny little pea drop, it still sets really quickly. And you've only got about 10 minutes if, well, <laughs> five minutes realistically. So this is probably halfway through setting already, even though, as you can see, I've only just started to mix it. So what I'm going to do is rather precariously and very messily splodge this onto one side of that uh, plastic card uh, winder profile that I've just cut out. Literally, as long as it took me to wipe my fingers, clean the palette knife, and put the acetone away, the isopon had already turned to cheese and was carvable. I used the template, the plastic art template, as a guide so that I could pair the isopon back to the uh, template and just get a sort of a rounded shape so that there wasn't going to be too much sanding needed to get it to the right uh, profile. Then we proceeded to cover the other side with more isopon.
Once the filler had gone beyond the, the cheese and leather stage, you then have to resort to files and sandpaper for the, for the final finish. Once I was happy with the winder, that was attached to the, the Plasticard gear assembly. All that now remains is to put a coat of Battleship Grey onto the uh, tubing and to the winder. We'll do a bit of dry brushing and a bit of colouring in.
This final shot shows how, how effective that chrome pen really is. I think it looks great. So the cross frame and the winder and all the gear mechanisms and everything are just placed in position at the moment. The corners will be glued later once the pilot is in place. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, press subscribe and like. Um, and I'll see you on the next one.